and the economic recovery. Let's bring in ZipRecruiter's chief economist, Julia Pollack. Julia, welcome to the National Desk. Great to see you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. First, what are, what are we looking at here? What's your thoughts in seeing this jobs report? There are three big stories in this jobs report. Blockbuster job gains are continuing. We've now had 11 straight months of job growth above 400,000. Remember, before the pandemic, we were adding jobs at around 210, 220,000 a month. So this is a really big number, very, very encouraging. We also are seeing the great return to the labor force picking up. So in the past six months, we've added 3 million people to the labor force. Uh, labor force participation ticked up this month. It's still not where it was. So it's now 62.4% below the 63% that we saw before the pandemic, but we are moving in the right direction. And then finally, we saw a big return to the office. So people who had their return to the office date pushed back time and time and time again, actually are coming back now. Uh, the number of people working remotely just due to the pandemic so temporarily is down from 15.4% in January now to 10%, just 10%. Uh, and that means that those local businesses that rely on foot traffic downtown are going to have a chance to come back. Right, and that's always good news. So, Julia, what, what jobs are in high demand at the moment? What industries have you seen the most amount of growth in over the past few months? So we saw very broad gains in this report in leisure and hospitality and in professional business services, but also in retail and manufacturing. Uh, and so this is a, an encouraging report because these gains are taking place broadly across the economy. We've seen very, very high uh, demand for workers uh, for, for months now, but in industries like manufacturing, those labor supply constraints were really binding on employers and they were struggling to find candidates as people return to the labor force and they feel more comfortable coming to work and working in uh, in-person settings like factories where they're pretty close together, uh, we should see further job growth in those kinds of industries. You know, when it comes to the job market, a number of businesses are still experiencing these worker shortages. In fact, 4.4 million Americans quit their jobs in February alone. And I also recall reading that many people who did quit their jobs now kind of regret doing so. They'd like to get their whole jobs back. From what you're seeing, Julia, is there a clear solution to this high turnover rate? So yes, we've, you know, for, for more than 10 months now, we've had more than 4 million people quit their jobs each month. Before the pandemic, the you know, more normal rate was about 3 million. So this is, this is a very big change. There is enormous churn in this labor market. What's driving that is the fact that we have 60% more job openings than we did before the pandemic. So people are far more likely to find a good match now, uh, and they're sorting into the kinds of jobs and kinds of environments that they like best. Um, so we find in our research that about 90% of people who've switched jobs are very happy they've done so. There's very high job satisfaction right now, much higher than normal. Uh, we're seeing the regret on the other side. Employers who laid off workers during the pandemic are regretting their decisions and wishing that they'd held on to them because it's so hard to replace them now. Yes, yes, that's a good point also. Is there any indication as to what we can expect in April or, or anything you foresee boosting job growth even more in the following weeks? Sure. So the number of people who said that they couldn't search for work due to the pandemic has fallen dramatically. There are new job seekers coming in now with so many open jobs. We expect them to be pretty successful and to add to the ranks of the employed very soon. Remember, this is also now uh, the time of the year when temperatures start warming up. Uh, building season is about to, to get kicked off right as we speak. Uh, and this economy has been uh, unusually sensitive to weather uh, in the past two years because so many people have felt more comfortable dining outdoors than indoors. Mm. Uh, that, of course, was, is only possible in uh, January and you know uh, February in uh, places like Los Angeles, where I live, and in, in Florida. But across the country, you're going to see uh, business picking up outdoors, uh, outdoor markets, outdoor exercise classes, um, uh, and outdoor dining. And that could add yet further uh, ammunition to this uh, labor force recovery, especially in leisure and hospitality. Very, very quickly, you said you're in Los Angeles. How are gas prices affecting uh, <laughs> people there? I just got to ask you very quickly. I used to live in California also. That is a sore point. Uh, let's <laughs> let's let's avoid that. What what we will see, uh, I think, is you know if you look at, at ZipRecruiter job seekers right now, job seekers across the nation, about 62% say that they would prefer remote work. 
Uh, so so you know, 20 percent of job seekers are only looking for remote jobs. Mm. And even as the pandemic wanes and that reason for wanting to work remotely you know, falls away, uh, gas prices and the huge costs of commuting are going to cause people to want remote work to stick. So we expect this remote work revolution uh, to, to stick. Uh, the number of jobs that are permanently becoming remote keeps increasing. Uh, about 5 percent of all work days were done remotely before the pandemic. That's 25% now, and it is incredibly, incredibly popular it among is. workers yeah. and job seekers. And, and for businesses, they get to save on real estate, quite frankly, exactly. and those can be turned into housing or something. And you know there are all kinds of other benefits to job seekers, employers, uh, sorry, workers see it uh, as as equivalent to an 8% increase in pay mm, uh, because they gained 70 minutes a day uh, of time you know, that would have been spent commuting or preparing for work, or putting on makeup and suits. Um, and they spend 30 minutes of that time working more. So productivity goes up about 5%, sometimes more, uh, especially in companies that make the right investments. So we expect that to stick. It also means that we'll see a continued churn because not all companies are offering people the opportunity to work from anywhere and work remotely. Many companies are insisting that people come back to the office. I think they'll see quite a big backlash uh, as people leave for the companies that are allowing them to work remotely or in a hybrid setting. Right. Win-win, it seems like, for both for both the worker and the employer. Julia Pollack, great having you on this Friday. I know it's very great early joining you. on the West Coast. Hope you have a great weekend. <laughs> Take care. You too.